What's up guys, welcome back. Today we're diving into rule number two, Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules for Life. I highly recommend that you go out and buy this book because if you watch Jordan's speeches and then you read the book, it's almost like he had more time to sit down and think, you know, this someone's gonna read this book and he just, when you read this book, you see that he really cares. His speeches are wonderful, but he seems even more brilliant when you read his, his uh, writing. So this chapter is called Treat Yourself Like Someone You're Responsible for Helping. And then right there we have this little picture, okay, on the left. Now this is a great chapter. And to start off, we, that was a picture of Adam and Eve. I always had a huge problem with the story of Adam and Eve. Back in Sunday school, I've heard it a hundred times and it pissed me off because the simple fact, it's almost like when you watch a movie and the character does something so stupid, a complete 180 from any logical, rational decision. It's like, just do this and your life will be better. And Adam and Eve, they had the perfect life. They God set them up and literally the garden that had everything in it. They could have sex all day. They could eat from every single tree and bush. They got to name the animals. I mean, that's a pretty good life. And they didn't have to work. They were just living in complete pleasure according to their nature. And they went and screwed that up. And so they went and screwed it up by a snake. God gave them one rule. He said, Adam and Eve, listen, there's this one tree called the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Do not eat from that tree. And eat from the tree. The snake, which is Satan, is in the garden, okay? There's a snake in paradise, I know. And he says, he thinks this is sort of like the yin and yang. And we'll get into that later. But the, just know that in the Bible story, there's a little slithering snake. And he comes up to Eve. And he goes, Eve! Eve! I don't know how a snake talks, but I imagine him holding this fruit in his mouth. Eve, take a bite of the fruit. And she, she goes, why? And he's like, if you take a bite of this fruit, you will have your eyes completely open to the knowledge of good and evil. You will become like God and gives you the fruit. And she takes the fruit and she bites it and she becomes woke, like aware. She is now self-conscious. And, and for some reason, she thinks it wise to go and trick her husband because she ain't going to be the only one. She's not going to have a husband that's unaware, right? He's gonna, she's going to bring him up to his level. She's like, Adam, you got to take a bite of this apple. And he does it. He's deceived. Now he becomes awake. And the first thing that they notice is their own nakedness. And he says, and this is very fascinating to read about, is that, you know, this story is very descriptive. It's almost like... You know how absurd it is? It sounds like they were in paradise, they eat, boom, their life changes, they're cast out of the garden, they have to suffer for eternity, and now you and me and every single human being that's alive is going to suffer. Because of these guys, it's like, this is a description of what being human, the story of humanity. Because a bear isn't aware of itself. It's not... It's not malevolent. It's not trying to cause harm for the sake of causing harm when a human is close to its cubs. It's just innate. It's like in its nature. The bear isn't down by the stream couch, ca uh, catching salmon and trying to like, you know, they're fucking like making this salmon suffer. It's not like poking holes in it and torturing it. No, it's just catching the fish and it does that out of its own nature. It's not aware. It attacks another and kills it and it doesn't feel anything. It's not preconceived. It's not thinking about the future. It's not aware of that. And by being naked and realizing that we're naked, humans became aware of the very simple fact that we can be hurt and we know how to hurt. We know how to cause harm to other people. Our very nakedness, standing upright as a human, you know, you're vulnerable to stabbing yourself or getting a spear thrown at you and getting your private parts chopped off or getting, you know, shot in the chest with an arrow. It's like you don't have this shell on your back that's guarding you from all the harm. And so that's a very intense thing to realize. I mean, self-consciousness, being able to 
realize like you can't argue with pain. It's something that we all feel and we hate it. It's so real. You can't escape from it. There are people in this world that literally torture other people. There's still beheadings. There's all this crazy shit going on. There's wars. There's kids getting kidnapped. All you got to do is take a look on the internet and you can just, it'll, it can warp your brain after a while. And it just seems so wrong. You can get to a place in your life where you're like, humanity is flawed. I am disgusted with my own race. And there's people like that. I've read that on forums. Like there's people that say that we need to just wipe out humans for good and just get rid of them and then restart. It's like, whoa, 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 buddy. That's not a good answer. You need to take responsibility now and like be the change. Like Gandhi, be the change you want to see in the world. But it's so, it's crucial that you understand here. What he's saying is like, you can get to such a place of disgust in your life. You've fallen so far from God because of your realization that you're human and that we're flawed, that you hate humanity. You hate the very existence of your life. And when it gets really bad, you can start to self-sabotage. And I think that a lot of us self-sabotage in ways that we don't know. We become our own enemy. We become our biggest bully. We stop caring for ourselves. We stop putting ourselves as number one. We start, you know, putting other people's first and then and then not taking our medicine. He talks about in the very beginning, why wouldn't you take your medicine? You're on the, you're, there's people that literally forget to take their medicine when they know they're going to die and they rationalize to themselves. And so we take, we would rather take care of a pet. You know, you're not going to treat a pet like bad, but a lot of people would rather save their dog than a stranger. You can read about this and therefore I'd rather save a dog than any of my, you know, any, a random stranger on the street. It's like, when you think life is that bad, you stop dreaming, you stop hoping, you stop taking care of yourself, and you just become like, you know, you just lay down and rot in a sense. And he, he's like, think about a child. If you just give a child candy, yeah, it's going to make it happy, but it's not the best for the child. And so you don't want to just give yourself ca like candy all the time. You also will tell that child to brush his teeth. You will teach that child virtue. You will teach that child to... The, the things to do that is going to make its life better. And so a lot of us stop doing that. We stop caring for ourselves. We stop like literally like, man, we stop loving ourselves. We're disgusted. And I think it goes under the radar. I think we just have this way of living at sort of sadistic self-sabotage. And so I'm going to leave you guys right here with a passage from the book. He says that just by us being alive, we have an obligation to live like to live and make the world a better place because there's people out there guys that are suffering with a disease they're trying to raise a family and they're holding up and they're going strong and they're you know living in this life and they're somehow pulling it together you see these are like the everyday heroes these are the people that you would think would be down and out but they continue to go it's like it's our right to live it's a, it's your right it is your obligation to take care of yourself. He says, you need to consider the future and think, what might my life look like if I were caring for myself properly? What career would challenge me and render me productive and helpful so that I could shoulder my share of the load and enjoy the consequences? What should I be doing when I have some freedom to improve my health, expand my knowledge, and strengthen my body? You need to know where you are so you can start to chart your course. You need to know who you are so that you can understand your armament and bolster yourself in respect to your limitations. You need to know where you are going so that you can limit the extent of chaos in your life, restructure order, and bring the divine force of hope and bear on the world. Guys, he says that we all have a spark of God inside of us. We were made. We were made not just, we we're not nothing. We have a spark of that creator in us. And I don't know, you know, if you believe in God, but we're a part of like the universe, man. Like we come from carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, the same stuff to think that you are a disgusting individual just because you may have these thoughts and you've got to a point where you hate life. It's like, that's all an illusion. Yes, yes, life can be really hard, but 
you know, you can choose how you're going to live. You can choose to take responsibility. You can choose to get a little bit closer to the truth. You can choose to not be like Adam and hide away just because of your, your self-hate and your disgust. You can choose to, you know, take that consciousness that makes you human and make the world a better place. You can choose to get a little bit closer to God. And so, that is chapter two, guys, on taking care of yourself. Like it's responsible, like you're responsible for someone else. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys soon on rule number three. Peace.